Hi everyone! While the world is busy preparing for Valentine's Day this weekend, here on Game & Browse, we've been preparing for another holiday, Halloween. That's because Halloween Forever makes its Nintendo Switch debut today, February 12th, on the Nintendo eShop. Today on the channel, we're going to be playing and sharing Halloween Forever with all of you. But first, special thanks to the publisher of Halloween Forever, Chuhai Labs, for hooking us up with this early review copy of the game on Nintendo Switch. Congratulations on your first published title, guys, and here's to many more in the future. For those of you who don't know Chuhai Labs, you should. They're an up-and-coming game publishing company looking to bring more indie games to the masses. So, like their video says, Send us your games! Hell yeah! Now without further ado, let's get spooky! So, on first impression, looking at the title screen, I see something that looks familiar. To those of you who are fans of the Halloween franchise, you might recognize an homage here to the movie Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, with the portrayal of the three masks, the witch, the skeleton, and the pumpkin. So the premise for Halloween Forever is, a spellcaster casts a spell that makes it continually Halloween, hence the name of the game Halloween Forever. This kind of reminds me of that Fairly Odd Parents episode where Timmy wishes that every day was Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, this takes us to the character select screen, where right away two characters are unlocked, Pumpkin Man and Santa Pumpkin. Regardless of the character you pick, the mechanics of the game stay consistent, so there's no need to learn a bunch of different rules or button combinations, which is great for an untalented gamer like myself. One button for jump and one button to throw a projectile is more than enough buttons for me. One note about the projectiles is that they're on a curved path, similar to the rocks in Friday the 13th on NES. Each character has a unique projectile that coordinates with their style. Additional characters are unlockable as you progress throughout the game's five worlds. Some of the more interesting and fun characters include Butternut Bro, whose gourds explode on impact, a skeleton, who does a long-reaching scattered volley of bones, and Ms. Witch, with her ricocheting cats that land on the ground, tearing down any enemies that block her path. Halloween Forever has the player running, jumping, and shooting their way through mansions, dungeons, cemeteries, and other eerie environments. The colors in this game are very spooky and festive, which makes all of these undead characters actually seem pretty lively. The sprites, whether that be the player character or the many enemies, are all nicely detailed and help immerse the player within the game's pixelated universe. I'm sure as you can tell, Halloween Forever falls into the old-school 2D side-scrolling platformer genre. This style of game has become very popular within the indie crowd, thanks to the massive success of games like Shovel Knight. This type of game is always good by me. I mean, who doesn't like a good old-school inspired platformer? 2D platformers are like chicken soup for the gamer's soul. They're comforting and can be relied on for a good time. Staying in line with that, Halloween Forever is easy to learn, fun, and isn't overly complicated. While Halloween Forever is easy to pick up, the game isn't a pushover. The challenge found here is that old-school Nintendo kind of challenge, where in pattern recognition and becoming familiar with the layout of the stages are the keys to being successful. This prevents the game from being speedrun too quickly on initial playthroughs and requires the player to slow down and think about their actions before blazing full speed ahead. Halloween Forever is definitely one of the games that is easier to play but harder to master. The game isn't the longest by any means, but a lot of the value is in its replayability. Each of the five worlds has two bosses placed within them, usually reflective of the common enemies in the area, and once you finish the game, you are greeted with a little story and an image of the character you just beat the game with so it's worth exploring with each of the unlockable characters. And finally, if you collect all six of the runes spaced throughout the game, you can even get a secret ending to the game as well. One notable thing about Halloween Forever is that you can choose how difficult you want to make the game. From the get-go, there are options within the menu that allow you to change the number of lives that you get, as well as the ability to continue closer to where you leave off when you get a game over. This is great for a wide variety of gamers. Gamers like me, who want to see the whole game, but who might want to take the more dangerous scenic route to the end, will need some of those extra lives to be able to experience everything the game has to offer. More skilled players, like Aaron, would rather take his chances with the default setting of two lives and have the additional challenge of playing conservatively while traversing the entirety of the game. The fact that these game settings are available from the beginning really helps accommodate for different playstyles and different gamers. If you're really a glutton for punishment, there's even a one-hit-point mode where if you get hit, it's game over, a la Ghosts and Goblins. 
I think I'll leave that mode to Aaron. Now, let's talk about Bang for Your Buck. Halloween Forever is only $10 on the Nintendo eStore, and for what you get, this game is absolutely worth the meager price tag. I mean, dinner for two at Taco Bell costs more than this game does. Simply put, this game is worth the price of admission. Between the different forking paths within levels, the large cast of playable characters, Halloween Forever has a very high replay value, and I know that we'll be revisiting this game, not just during spooky season, but whenever we want to partake in the comforts of an old-school retro side-scrolling platformer. Not to mention that because this game is now available on the Nintendo Switch, all of this spooky fun can be put into your pocket and taken on the go as well. Wait... Wasn't there some other franchise that boasted about having monsters in your pockets? Eh, doesn't matter. That about wraps it up for Halloween Forever on the Nintendo Switch. Overall, we really enjoyed our time with this game so far, and we definitely recommend checking this one out, especially considering what you get for your money. Thanks again to Chu High Labs for the review code, and thanks again to all of you for watching. See you next time here on Game & Browse.